Good morning from the frozen tundra in the north. The north guys. The Canadian. The Canucks. This Canuck Jamaican says good morning. Hey, um, let's talk about today's topic, which is divestors. We know they're angry. I'm not here to gaslight. Their anger is justified. But what does it profit them to stay in this anger mode? Does this get them to the goal? The goal of a divested life. A life that you get rid of things that make you worse and you embrace the things that will prove you. Black YouTube. Where accountability, personal responsibility are rejected. The other guy is to blame. I bear no fault in anything that's happening in the community. Welcome to Black YouTube. Welcome to the place where fat women ask broke men to level up and broke men ask fat women to lose weight. What a place. Welcome to the Pookie Jamal show, the Jamaican Canadian, oxtail eating yard man, where possible curry gravy on the rice, rice and peas on Sunday. But guess what? His television is always stuck on CP24 and he says sorry at least twice per day. Welcome to the Pookie Jamal Show. I have a little rant that I need to go through. And this is for the divestment movement. This is my rant. Let me tell you something. Black men have been divesting individually for years. For years. If you look at the rate of divestment of black men, meaning outmarrying, it has been double the rate of black women. Black men did not form groups to have this divestment. They didn't. They never saw the need for a group. They never saw the need to go into a group to bash black women and then go, uh, go to get white women. What they learned was, listen, two things, two important things. Image resources. Black men knew their image was tied to the NFL. It was tied to the NBA. It was tied to the MLB. Those guys were parading, hitting home runs, dunking, slamming the ball, spiking the ball after a touchdown to show that they were masculine, masculine, masculine men. And through that, they helped to build their image. Now, they had to fight against a lot of negative things because there were crackheads on the streets and drug dealers, you know, you know the, the, um, the school to prison pipeline. So they had to fight that because it was either you were a thug or an or a athlete. And then you had those guys who became educated. Lots of those guys are actually Caribbean and African immigrants. And they came in, a lot of them with degrees, and or they went to school. And they these guys, <laughs> they know this H-1B stuff, man. They, they went to school and they never left the U.S. And a lot of them are professionals today. Lawyers, engineers, dentists, doctors. A lot of them, they're dedicated ones. Those are the ones that are marrying out at a high rate, a very high rate. And so they understood that, listen, there were three kind of folks there. There was the street dude who really was damaging the image. There was the athletes who had a big outsized um, impact because, you know, they were on television. Like the Super Bowl is the number one watched uh, program, right? So you had those guys with the image. And then you had the third guy who you don't see a lot. You don't see a lot. Those guys live in the suburbs. They're quite educated and they're likely to marry out. So you had those three sets of guys. And guess what? That was the black man's image. Then you move from images to resources. Well, like, let's be honest, like NBA players and all those NFL guys, they have resources, but they're a small minority. But let's go back to those Caribbean African immigrants and a lot of, and, and you do have a lot of ADAS FBA um, African Americans who do have resources. Those guys with resources, they knew that they could provide a lifestyle for, I would consider, a highly sought of, after woman. And 30% of them actually do marry out. 70% do marry black women. Now, I don't, I don't want to hang on that 70% too much because I, I am very suspicious that a lot of lights and brights are in that 70%. But let's get back to the point. Those men did not form groups. They did not join Patreons. They did not go to um, grooming sessions to go and get with the people that they want. Now, I know there's an imbalance and I will not lie that there's not an imbalance. But if this, that, that, this divestment movement has to move from the anger stage, if it doesn't, and I'm saying this as an ally, and I know people might say, I don't want you as an ally. I don't care. This is my channel. 
I will be Pookie Jamal is your ally in on his channel. And I'm saying move from that anger stage to the level up stage. You got to level up and you have to face one important fact. You are after Brad and some say, some say Brad, Mario and Z, but look at it. Brad left Europe and conquered the Americas. He went and conquered Australia. He went and conquered New Zealand. Brad went all over the world and he conquered. And he built his societies there. And today, Brad, when he's tired of his own women, he'll go to the Ukraine or Russia and go and find a woman. He will. He will. Look at it. They do it. It's called mail order brides. And when he wants a kink, he will go to Thailand. He'll go to Vietnam. He'll go to the Philippines. He'll go to Colombia. He'll go to Venezuela. He does all of that because he is not tied down. He's not living in the same, the same square mile that he was born. He will travel to go where he wants to get things. So why is he not down by MLK Boulevard looking for women? You got to understand that the black woman's image is damaged. It is damaged because rappers have done it. They have damaged that image. Black comedians have done it. Look at the, all those jokes. And these comedians, they didn't only do it in stand-up. They dress up as women. So when someone sees, I'm sorry to say, Tyler Perry or Martin Lawrence or Eddie Murphy, you know, all dress up in a dress as a woman, they think, hey, that's the big mama black woman. And that image is damaged. When rappers have video open sessions, auditions, and they don't want dark-skinned black women there, that's damaging the image. When Club 11 doesn't, their bouncers, I won't say it's 11, but maybe their bouncers don't allow dark-skinned women, that is showing that there is a damage of that image. Now, black women, you have the choice to help to repair your image. Now, you can make allies of black men or you can make non-allies of black men. Shouting and being angry at black men all day long is not making them allies. Calling them three trash bad bandits, calling them all manner of negative things like the, the, the disgusting things that some guys say. It brings up that angry black woman trope. That is not a good image. Now, if, 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 the, if they want to continue it, then guess what? 10 years from now, the divestment movement will still be in its anger stage. It will. When you get take on that real red pill and figure out that, listen, you got to let go of that anger. It may take time. Trauma takes a long time to get rid of, but you got to let go of it. If you don't let go of it, it traps you. It keeps you in its own prison. And you are not able to truly love someone, truly care for someone. So you can't really go into a relationship with such trauma. And you cannot go on dating sites, messaging men to have dates and meet with them for coffee and have, have sex in the back of their car. That, that's not going to help you. You need relationships. And to build relationships, that man has to see value in a relationship with you. He has to see you as a partner, someone that's there to support him. And men care about their kids. I don't want an angry trauma bond woman taking care of my kids. I don't want that. I actually don't. And I'm almost certain a lot of men don't want that either. And a lot of you say, black men don't speak for white men. I, I Listen, listen, you guys just calm down and sit down a bit. A white man is a man and a black man is a man. We know what is wanted. It's obvious, right? Look at the standards of women. At first, it was slim. You know, you had your Cindy Crawford, Christy Brinkley, all that. It was slim. Black men somehow influence thick. And today, the standard is slim thick. Slim thick. So any woman walking around saying black men want fat women, stop capping. That's a lie. Black men don't want fat women. They will settle, but they don't want. That's not what they want. And you may have some that want, but the majority don't. So listen, focus on the gym, focus on getting therapy, focus on reading, traveling. Listen, the best thing you can talk about a date is your trip to Italy. You know, you, you literally went to the real Transylvania. You went to Hungary. You know, you, you traveled the world. You went to Finland. 
You took a to you took one of those Nord those Nord uh, Nordic um, cruises and you went around and you knew history. Get to know the person that you want. Don't just think your anger against black men will be attractive. It won't because he knows that later your anger will turn against him. And men are men. Men will cheat. Now, not all men will treat, but you have to be honest, man. you got to be prepared for that. You have to be able to work in a calm manner with someone. And if that's not natural for you, you've got to think that he may not want that. And so I wanted to go on this rant because I think a lot of divestment sellers are selling a lie and they know it. They know that they're selling you loneliness. They're selling you not a life with another race of men. They're selling you a life with a cat, living in an apartment with a cat. And what I'm trying to say to you is once you get out of that anger stage and move to your level up stage, you increase your chances that that's not your reality. Now, some people may want that reality and I'm not going to say you shouldn't go for that reality. I mean, we're all individuals and we should, but we got to be honest with each other, right? We got to be honest. What is it that you want? And if you want to be bashing black men every day, for the next 10 years, I don't know where that puts you. I mean, that's that's your choice. But if you want to bash a little and then, you know, wake up one day and say, hey, I am, look in the mirror. Are you 200 pounds? How many books have you read this year? Have you traveled? Do you know the, the culture and the history of the person that you want to attract? How would you, are, can you be a good parent to another man's child? think about it. Those are the things, those are the questions that need to be answered after you get out of your anger. This is my run. Thank you.